Hello and welcome back to the Q&A. So, as always, if you have a question to ask me, then leave it in the comments or send it to me via Twitter, with the link being in the description, and I'll get to it. So, Makarian asks, uh, Number one, how many expansions do you think Blizzard have left for World of Warcraft? And do you believe, um, or sorry, do you have any ideas or deep wishes for where these expansions could turn to? The second part is, do you think the decision by Blizzard never to go back and remaster some of the Burning Crusade graphics was wrong? In a Q&A at BlizzCon, they said that they had no intention of ever going back to Silvermoon, Azure Mist, or any of the Burning Crusade content and cleaning it up and, uh, like, improving the look of the place. And then finally, in conjunction with the second question, what do you, um, what would you like for Blizzard to improve or change from past expansions? So just stuff like Vanilla, BC, Wrath, Cataclysm, that kind of thing. So, first part of the question, how many expansions do I think they have left? Oh, this is a this is a bit of a weird one. So, in short, what I think is they have as many as they could, uh, as many as it's profitable for. Blizzard are a business, and they're not going to just stop development of the game. That would be ludicrous. They're making $15 a month of 7.6 million people, with that number likely to, well, either stagnate or increase with Warlords of Draenor. We've already seen the subscription numbers... Well, they were dropping quite fast, they are, like, last, uh, last quarter they only dropped 100k. That's a tiny amount in comparison to what Blizzard has. Okay, that might be painful for some other MMOs, but definitely not for World of Warcraft. So what does this mean? Well, the game is very profitable at the minute. And its profitability is going to just, it's going to keep on being a thing. And as long as this game's profitable, they are not going to stop development. We can already see this nearly reflected in a few different things. First of all, they've been doing a, a lot of work in setting up characters to lead us into subsequent expansions. As an example, Grosh served as the main villain of this expansion and a segue into the next one. In the next expansion, they're going to be setting up uh, quite a lot of characters. Um, a good example is, say, uh, I think it's Yirel, or Yirel or something like that, or I just said the same thing twice, whatever, um, who's apparently going to be an Alliance heroine, so perhaps she will become a main character. And essentially, they're just sending up more and more and more pl uh, like plots, uh, plot devices, and things like that going forward. Previously, the game survived on old RTS lore, and right now, what they're trying to do is actually start bringing the lore forward a little bit. And I know, okay, Warlords of Draenor very much is Warcraft One related, but it's still very much, I suppose, based on the current story that we're going through at the minute. And in terms of where they're moving forward, they said that the events that end Warlords of Draenor will result directly into the next expansion, and that there is something behind the scenes in Warlords of Draenor. Perhaps that'll be the final boss, or perhaps that will be the motivation that carries us forward. But essentially what this means is they definitely have intentions of keeping on going, and the story is going to be far more of a plot arc that takes us over multiple expansions. Now, in terms of the actual specific uh, numeric amount of expansions that they're going to release, I think it could be... It could be three, it could be five, it could be six. I know that might sound mad to some people, but if expansions do end up coming out yearly, first of all, I don't think those numbers are crazy at all. And uh, EverQuest 1 has been going for 15 years or more. There is absolutely no reason why Warcraft cannot keep on going and going and going and never really ending. As for WoW 2, well, WoW 2 is, as it hasn't been announced or even talked about. We know the Project Titan is not World of Warcraft uh, or WoW 2. They've said that it's a new IP, so it's definitely not Warcraft, and there don't seem to be any other projects on the horizon that are Warcraft related. So this is what this is the game we are going to be with for a long time. And Blizzard have said they have the intention of doing many more expansions. I don't see any point stopping the game. People are still loving it, and they're only I think really this sounds crazy, but they're only really finally getting into their into their stride with actually having good World of Warcraft lore instead of just being like, yeah, we're going to resolve this part of the RTS plot and this part of the RTS plot. Well, now we're going forward, and I think that just sort of signifies that they're going to keep on working at this sort of thing, basically. Also, they did say the Warcraft 4 is not planned. And with it not being planned, there needs to be something to carry the torch for the Warcraft franchise until there's another game or another title or something like coming out. So yeah, World of Warcraft staying, even in terms of raw subscription numbers, this thing is going to be there for a long, long time as a subscription game. They did say they have no intentions of it being free to play, and uh, subscriber-wise, it's still by far the biggest subscription MMO that there is. It's probably bigger than most... Well, yeah, it's, it's probably bigger than many or nearly all free-to-plays. 
Yeah, and that's probably even counting like three members to subscription ones, so yeah, they're doing damn good. Now, the second question was, what do you think about them deciding not to go back and remaster any of the Burning Crusade stuff? I actually think this is the right decision. The Burning Crusade stuff is serviceable, it does its job, and I don't think Outland is really horrific. It's marked, like, it's a marked improvement over the vanilla questing. When I say vanilla questing, I mean what was, re like, what was there before Cataclysm. I think it's definitely better than that, and I, okay, m I might not stand up that well in comparison to the Cataclysm 1 to 60 experience, but it's also very short. If you get through Hellfire as quick as possible, get into Zanger Marsh, and then go through Nagrand, you're done. It's very, sh uh, like, a very quick romp through those zones. You get a lot of XP, and I actually enjoy it, so I, I think that's okay. Now, in terms of the other zones you mentioned, like Silvermoon, Azurmis, places like that, they just don't need upgraded, and... Well, I mean, okay, maybe it would be nice to have flying and stuff like that, but what I what I mean when I say they don't need it is it's not really a great use of development time. They're paying staff for things, and I would rather have the game, like the Blizzard resources, going into content for Endgame or the stuff that's pushing the experience forward rather than going back and having a small team of people work in Silvermoon when that small team of people could equally be developing art assets for a new section of the game. I guess, like, it would be nice, yes, but everything's about priorities, and I just don't think they would really be the best priorities for the game. So, as for part three, which was, um, what would I like to see them improve or change from past expansions? Really nothing. I mean, I'm happy with the Cataclysm 1 to 60 stuff. I'm happy with the Burning Crusade stuff. The Wrath of the Lich King stuff is my favorite leveling in the game, so I definitely don't really want any changes there. Um... And while, yeah, it would be nice, oh, I'd like a HD remake with new, better textures for Northrend, that's not feasible, it's never going to happen, so... I just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with how the sort of old game is. I suppose it would be nice if they would go back and add the scaling, get a decent framework in for scaling up old dungeons so we could experience them, and have them be mildly challenging. I suppose that's really the only thing. Now, as for the second question we're going to do in today's video, it's from uh, Cotter MCG, and he essentially says, Do you think there'll ever be, ever be a stop of the open war between the Alliance and the Horde? Um, so, like, if you're an Alliance player and you're going into Orgrimmar, you don't get attacked unless you're flagged for it, or, um, you know, you could still, like, do battlegrounds and that sort of thing, but in the world, it's just like a 90 running around the place isn't really actively, there's not really an active war going on there. And the reason he said that is because the Alliance said that they would back down from the bloodshed after 5.4. Well, no, I don't think that's going to happen because it's called World of Warcraft. One of the defining aspects of the game is these two factions that are, they're both, they both have their good qualities, but they're also at odds over various things. There's still issues going on like Ashenvale and the kind of various little war zones going on at Kylemandor, but essentially I just don't think they'll ever end the combat because it's it's not really, it doesn't make sense. Well, okay, so Varian says, oh, right, we'll stop this open rebellion. I think that still means if you are, like, a horde person, you go into an alliance town or something, you're still gonna get butchered by whoever the fuck's there. I just, like, that's, that's how it's gonna work. Sometimes gameplay has to trump, a very important thing about Blizzard, sometimes gameplay has to trump lore, and... I think this is one of those cases where maybe it makes narrative sense for the Alliance and the Horde to fully team up and be allies, but this is a game, and what matters the most is the gameplay of the game, and I don't really think that having a complete, sort of happy fun time truce between the two factions would be conducive to fun. Really, um, yeah, especially like, nearly like in a PvP server as an example, that couldn't happen. What the hell would a PvP server be? They'd all be PvE servers with flagging. So, yeah, that's what I think, uh, that's what I think about that. Alright, so let's just round this video off with two, I suppose, a bit shorter questions. The first one, and I'm sorry, I don't have names for these in my document, so, yeah, you, you will know who you are. <laughs> um, yeah, so Metzen said that Garrosh has a friend who can manipulate time. I don't think Kil'jaeden or any old god can do that. Well, yes, you're correct, Kil'jaeden and old gods cannot do that. And what they did actually say in BlizzCon who it is, it's Kairos Dormu. Now, the first half of that name might seem a little bit familiar to, um, to you, that's because he's the NPC that we mainly dealt with in the Timeless Isle. Essentially what was going on in the Timeless Isle is that the Bronze Dragon Flight lost a lot of their power at the end of Cataclysm in that extremely cringe cringeworthy and horrible cinematic. Um, yeah, they lost their power and they um, it established this thing full of different, I suppose, actually including humans as well, called the Time Walkers, and they were, were responsible for helping the uh, the Dragonflight out. 
with the kind of maintaining the timelines and making sure the infinite flight doesn't go up to some ridiculous bullshit and mess up time, I suppose. And, uh, well, we kept on killing all of these things in the Timeless Island, getting Epoch Stones and charging up the Hourglass of Time. This gave Kairos Dormu a lot of power when it came to manipulating time, and it would seem like, uh, some, for some reason anyway, him and Garrosh get acquainted. We don't know how this happens, it will probably be covered in, well, maybe in the opening, uh, the, like, the opening sort of pre-launch event thingy for the next expansion. We're probably going to find out how that happens. Still, it would stand to reason that Kairos Dormu is no longer a good guy. Perhaps he joins the Infinite Flight or something like that. Hard to know. Anyway, finally the next question is, what level uh, 100 heroic revamp dungeon thingies do you expect or want to see in Warlords of Draenor? Well, actually I, I know what to expect because they announced it. It's Upper Blackrock Spire. They're going to be revamping that for 100 heroic and I think also for a normal dungeon. So I suppose that's rather cool. As for things that I'd want to see, well, I mean, there's there's nothing in... Okay, personally, I don't actually care that much about the old dungeons. I would rather see resources going to new ones, but I suppose if it's, like, from time to time, if it's fun to revamp an old one, then fair enough. I think that the Skolomance revamp in Cataclysm was terrible. Or not in Cataclysm, in Mists of Pandaria was terrible. I don't enjoy that place whatsoever. I just think it's crap. And then also the um, is it Shadow something keep... One of the ones they did in Cataclysm, I didn't enjoy that either. I kind of enjoyed the Dead Mines because there was a significant amount of work done in that, but in general, I haven't enjoyed these revamps that much personally. So, yeah, I don't really care. I'm more interested in the new stuff. Anyway, that's it for today's Q&A. If you'd like to leave a question, please do so in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.